Good evening, this is Thomas Cantu. I'm an associate pastor here at Southside Baptist Church. Just want to welcome you to the Wednesday night Bible study. Tonight we're going to title is going to be adopted. And our main scripture tonight, we're going to be in Romans chapter 8. The main scriptures we're going to focus on is 8, 14, and 15. That'll be the scripture that we'll start out reading. You know, as we go through this life, there's we understand the things that we can see and feel with what's tangible, things that we experience, but there's so much more to life than that. There's so much more that we don't realize, the spiritual warfare that takes that takes place around us. You know, we don't realize the spiritual warfare that's going on. Ephesians, I, I love Ephesians chapter 6, it talks about that spiritual warfare. And as we go through our different battles and struggles, and, and those things happen for a reason. And whether you want to believe the spiritual realm exists, whether you want to believe the angels are out there, they're fighting for us, and, uh, or you don't, regardless of what you believe or think, Scripture talks about it, I believe it, it's real. Not just because I believe it, because that's what God, that's what God tells us. And I believe what He says in His Word, the promise that He gives us, gives us the warnings that He gives us, and, and everything else in from beginning to end, I believe what it says. And it talks about the spiritual warfare, and, and it exists, it's real. You know, we, we think somebody dies in this world, to, in our mind, in, our, in the concepts of the world, somebody dies, you don't see them anymore. So to, to us, in the flesh, they cease to exist. When I die, those around me think that I cease to exist. But there's more to it than that. Scripture tells us about that. And for believers, believers know this and understand this. Because the Spirit speaks to us and He tells us, confirms to us the truth, the truth of His Word. So when I'm dead and gone, my body may decay and I may not exist physically on this earth, but the Spirit inside of me lives on. So think about this for a second. If you're struggling, dealing with, do I believe, do I not believe, is God really real? Consider the fact that your spirit lives on. Whatever you're doing in this life, whatever you're serving, when you die, your spirit continues to live on. And the big question is, where does that spirit continue to live? And the scripture tells us, it's clear, it's one of two places. It's heaven or it's hell. It's with God or separated from God, which the Bible refers to as death. The wages of sin is death. And if we don't have that payment for our sins, that death, that death is not something that, a word that just means you cease to exist, you're dead, you no longer exist, you're no longer there. That's not what it means. The death in the scripture, when it talks about death, eternal death, you continue to live on, your spirit continues to live on, but that death means you're separated from God. You're separated from God. Well, if it's not heaven with God, then it's hell with Satan. And that's not a pretty place. So whether you believe or not, consider that. That is truth. And if for some reason I was to happen to be wrong in that, just for the sake of argument, what would I lose? The fun of this world, the drunk, the drug, the the drugs, the drunkness, the the all, all the things the world has to offer that pass away. I'd sacrifice that to risk. You know, the risk, the compare the risk. Because if I believe and it wasn't true, I wouldn't lose anything. But if I didn't believe and it is true, eternity, eternity in hell, it's, it's, a, it's a great, great, huge mistake to make to find out that you were wrong on that. But that's the way I used to think. And now that I move forward, when I look back at that, we were thinking that, you know what, my faith in God, because he has showed himself time and time again as I put faith in him. As you put faith in God and you trust him time and time again, when you look back, you won't need that reasoning because you know in your heart that God is real because he lives within us. So we talk about that eternal separation, being separated from God, the death, but that's not to leave you there because there's hope. There's hope. Those who, re, those who will receive Jesus Christ, who will believe who He is and receive Him, you get ado adopted into the family of God. That means you're no longer under that bondage of sin. The wages of sin is death. Well, when you've got Jesus Christ, you're adopted into a family. We're going to talk about that adoption tonight. And when you're adopted into that family, that means you're no longer part of the old family. Adam and Eve, who fell to sin, we're no longer part of that. You look at, trace our lineage, and you go back in time, 
and you keep going back from generation to generation all the way to the very beginning, guess what? You're going to find out you have DNA of Adam and Eve. And that the proof of that is in our sinful nature. But when we're adopted into the kingdom of God, when we're adopted through the blood of Jesus Christ, you're no longer part of that sinful nature. Well, we still have that sinful nature, but you're no, part, no longer part of that, under that bondage that's going to take you straight to hell. Because as an adoption, we become heirs. In other words, we receive that, that gift of eternal life. We receive to be a partaker of heaven with Jesus Christ. And that's an exciting thing to talk about. Let's get into our scripture before I go too far. Romans chapter 8. And I want to read to you verses 14 and 15 to get us started. It says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we come before you humbly this evening, Lord. We thank you for your grace and mercy. We thank you for your Son on the cross. That you give us that opportunity to have eternal life. That we can become part of your family. I pray tonight that you just hide me behind the cross. As we talk about your word, Lord. I pray that you will open the ears and open the hearts. Cast Satan away from the hearers tonight. That they will not be distracted, but they will hear you, Lord. Let it be your message that's delivered. Let it be a message that draws us closer to you. Let, us be, let it be a message that gives us a deeper understanding and a deeper love for you and for your son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray that through this, you will excite us enough that we'll take this message out and that we'll tell others about that great adoption, that we'll tell others about the love of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray for those who may be listening tonight who are still not adopted into the, the family of God, those who do not have Jesus Christ as their Savior. I pray that you will touch them tonight, draw them to you, Lord. I pray that you will send your Holy Spirit and begin to work in their heart to give them a new life, to become sons of God as well. We thank you, Lord, and we love you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, so the great adoption. Think about that adoption. You know, and as I said, you, tra tra you trace our lineage back from generation to generation. You're going to find that we, we started out our roots with Adam and Eve. The very sin that happened in that garden when Eve first decided to follow Satan Listen to his words, listen to those lies, instead of following obedience. We have that same DNA. We have that same sinful nature. That when we hear the world drawing us, Satan saying, hey, try this, this is really good. And that sin, that sinful nature, that flesh begins to draw and pull us away. That's the evidence that you have a sinful nature. And there's not one of us that can say we don't. It doesn't matter who you are, how far you've been, what you've done in your family, how you've been raised. Bottom line is, we all have sin. Some may have sinned more than others. Some may have done what we could call a worse sin. But you know what? Sin is sin. And no matter what your sin, whether you stole a candy bar, told a little lie, or did a mass execution, whatever that sin is, that sin put Jesus on the cross. That same sin has also separated us from God. And the only way to pay for that sin is eternal damnation. Damnation, which is the way to sin is death, separation from God. But we thank the Lord for sending Jesus Christ to be our Savior. He would go and take our place on that cross to make the way, to make that pathway, so that we could be adopted into that same kingdom. Now we go and talk. I want to go back to Romans 8, chapter, chapter 8, verse 1. And think about this. It says, therefore, is therefore now no condemnation, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And I want to stop right there before I read on any further. No more condemnation. We're not condemned. As lost sinners before we have Jesus Christ, we're condemned already. We're condemned by our sin. We're headed to hell. And it's hard to grasp that the concept of being a baby who was born headed to hell. Now, not to say that that baby's heading there yet, because not until the age of accountability when he becomes old enough to know. 
but that is already in the blood, that sinful nature. And as we grow up and get older and we become old enough to understand right and wrong, age of accountability, now you've got to make a choice, heaven or hell, smoking or not. So we begin already on that course, that path. But here he says, there's no condemnation. No condemnation for who? For those who are in Christ. What does that mean? How can I be in Christ? What does that mean? What that means is I've got Jesus Christ in me. What that means is I've surrendered to Jesus Christ, to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. That means I believe Jesus Christ was the Son of God. It means that I believe that He died on that cross for me. The whole gospel means I believe that and that I accept Jesus Christ as my Savior. And I begin to walk. Just as it says here, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Now there's a lot to be said about that. That right there, that verse right there preaches. Because when we walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit, that's going to be seen by the things that you do daily. Now this is where some of you are going to reach over there, maybe hit that pause button and say, I don't want to hear anymore. Because the way we live our lives is going to show whether we walk after the flesh or the Spirit. By the way we speak, the language that we use, by the places we go into, the habits that we have, they're going to define, they're going to show, not define, they're going to reflect who we're walking after. If I'm out there smoking and drinking and getting into drugs or pornography, or stealing, chasing the ways of the world, and not spending any time with God, I'm walking in the flesh. But if I'm doing godly things, if I'm seeking out God, if I'm in my God's, God's word, and I'm applying his principles, and I'm staying away from all the sinful things that God says stay away from, now I'm beginning to work in the spirit. Now, that doesn't mean I'm never going to slip, never going to fall. It doesn't mean I'm not going to make mistakes. We're all going to make mistakes. We're all going to slip at some point because Satan is out there. He's working and he's working hard. He wants your soul. If you haven't said yes to Jesus, he doesn't want you to hear this. He doesn't want you to believe this. If you have accepted Jesus, he wants you to shut your mouth. He wants you to be down. He wants you to be depressed. He wants you to be the kind of person who does not go out and tell us about Jesus. That's what Satan's going to do. He's going to try to hold you back. He's going to try to discourage you. But we walk in the flesh, we get in trouble. We walk in the spirit. So it shows that we've got Jesus. It shows that we're some, somebody different. And that's how you see someone who's in the flesh or someone who's in the spirit by the actions. So look at your actions. Now, take a time, take a moment, write down some things on a piece of paper. Write down some of the things that you're doing. Is this godly? Does this glorify God? Is this something of the spirit? Does it line up with God's word? Or what am I doing over here? Is it against God's word? Does God's word say don't? do this. Don't go around these people. Don't act that way. Don't behave that way. And you're doing those things. It's not over. It doesn't mean you're doomed. What it means, if you're listening to this and, you, and you're and you seeing that maybe I am walking in the flesh more than I thought it was. Now's the time to repent. Say, Lord God, take that sin from me. Take that desire from me. I want to walk in the Spirit. I want to be, as it says here, no more under the condemnation. I don't want to be condemned. When I get to heaven and I, those gates open up, I want God to see the blood of Jesus Christ on me. I want him to see that I've accepted him and that I'm walking for him. And that's the same thing that people around where you work at, where you go to school at, where you hang out at, people be, should be able to see that you're walking in spirit and not the flesh. They may not understand it, some of them. They may understand why you're a little bit different. But you get the opportunity to share with them what makes you different. Tell them how Jesus Christ died on that cross for you. How he rose again and conquered the grave. And has adopted you into his family. And then tell them how they can also be adopted into that family. And become a brother or sister in Christ with you. And think about that. Think about the excitement of that. Telling somebody, this is what Jesus Christ did for me. I'm no longer condemned. I'm adopted into that family. 
I'm now a heir. I'm going to re receive the heavenly things. I'm one day going to be able to walk up there and walk on those streets of gold, see the mansion, have my own mansion. Could you imagine all the things that we experience in this world, the ups, the downs, the good things that we get, the riches that we might get, the losses that we, we experience, the hurt that we experience, all from here to there. But when we get to heaven, it's going to be all good. So whatever we do on this earth is so small. Whatever we experience on this earth is so small compared to that inheritance that we could receive one day. And it goes on in verse 2, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. I know there's a law of the Spirit. When you've been accepted, when you've accepted Jesus Christ and adopted that means no more condemned. The law of the Spirit in Christ has made me free. I'm free. Are you free? Are you free from that bondage of sin? Does it still have a hold of you? Does it still pull you back? Does it have its grip on you, that death hold? Only Jesus Christ can take that, that death hold and just throw it to the side and free you. Free from that sin, free from that bondage, free from that guilt. You repent and you turn from it. And that's where it is to walk in the Spirit of Christ. That's where it is to be no more condemned, to experience that freedom that Jesus Christ went to the cross and laid down his life so you could have that same freedom, so that you could have that relationship with God, so that you could also be adopted into the family of God and become as a son or a daughter of God. Think about that. I want to jump up to verse 13. For if you live after the flesh, we're going back to talking about that flesh again. It says, if you live after that flesh, you shall die. Man, if I'm living after this flesh, I'm going out partying, I'm having a great time. I've got money coming in here and I've got money coming in there. And I'm, I'm just enjoying life. I'm living in the flesh and everything is great. But it says right there, you shall die. It's going to come to an end. And when it comes to an end, you're going to find that all the greatest times that you think you've had, it's not going to even be anything compared to what God had to offer you in heaven. And even worse, it's not going to be worth trading off for the fact that without Christ, you're doomed to hell. And that there's no way out. It's not like you get to hell and say, okay, I changed my mind. I want to go ahead and repent now. That's not the way it works. That's not what scripture teaches. You're alive. You're breathing. You have that, that opportunity to make that choice. To say, yes, Jesus, I want you as my Savior. To begin to turn over a new leaf. Because if not, you shall surely die. Just as God told Adam and Eve, the garden, do not eat of that fruit. They were told, do not eat of that fruit, you will die. So Satan came along and says, no, surely you won't die. Well, I'm here today to tell you, surely you will die. Satan's going to tell you, surely you won't die. So what happened to Adam and Eve? Are you going to be the next victim? Or are you going to choose Jesus? It says, you shall die. It says, but if you, through the Spirit, if through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, kill those deeds, those things that you want, kill, stop it. So you shall live. You have an opportunity to live, to be free. And you know, we talk about the afterlife. It's going to be so great. No more sickness, no more tears, no more weeping. It's going to be awesome. But you know, as we go through this life, and yes, we will experience some down times. We will experience some, some trials. That's life. Jesus told us in his, his words, he said, you will experience trials and tribulations. But you know what? Even with that, when you say yes to Jesus Christ, and you have that relationship with him, he's ready to start working on you right here, right now. He's ready to start blessing you right here, right now. Through the trials, through the struggles, through the hard times, he says, I'm going to walk with you through this. I'm going to walk with you through the valleys. And I'm going to be there. And I'm going to send, he said he would send the comforter, the Holy Spirit, to comfort us, to help us get through this life. So, we don't wait till we get to heaven to experience God. 
when you say yes to him, you begin to experience him the very moment you step out of faith. And every day that you step out of faith, when you're called to serve him, when you're called to witness for him, when you're being tested in the trials, and you step out of faith and you trust him, and you go through some struggle, you go through some pain, but then you experience the peace of knowing that God's getting me through this. And then you get to experience the victory of God has helped me overcome. And you experience that victory of Christ. It's part of that inheritance of experiencing the victory, the things that God will do for you. In verse 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. To be a son of God, to be a daughter of God. So those who are following after His Spirit, following in His ways, inherited that inheritance, sharing that, being adopted into the family. When you're adopted into a new family, you start to call those new, those new mom and dad, mom and dad. They begin to give you something new, something different than what you had before. And you know, when God adopted me, he began to bless me. Doesn't mean I had all the riches that I want. Doesn't mean that everything was perfect. But there were blessings there of knowing I know where I'm going, of knowing that he's with me, but he's beside me. He's with me, carrying me through the struggles, through the hard times that he's there. And that in itself is a blessing to know that I'm a son of God. And when you stop and think for a second, what do the parents do? Real good parents, the way God intended, parents provide for their children. They give them the food they need. They give them the clothing they need. They give them the shelter they need. They give them the protection that they need. They give them the love that they need. And to have all those things provided to you from the God in heaven, from the creator of the heavens and the earth, to be able to call him your father, Abba Father, is a blessing. It's an adoption. And God says, I'm here for you. His scripture says, he's not willing that any should perish. He doesn't want anybody to go to hell. He doesn't send people to hell. People send themselves to hell by rejecting Jesus Christ, by rejecting the truth of the gospel. And those are the ones that we need to be praying for. Because he wants them all to come. Although scripture also tells us, there's going to be many who will not. That's why it's so important that we as believers, we get out there and we tell the gospel. We share the gospel. We live the gospel. So that as many as we can reach for Jesus, we're not going to save them, but we're going to deliver that message. And the Holy Spirit can work through you to reach out. Because now you're a child of God. You're part of the family. He's going to use you to reach out to touch others, to draw others to Him, that that family can grow and we have a bigger family. That should be exciting. That should be something to wake up in the morning for and say, you know what, Lord God, give me somebody to witness to today. Now that I'm part of your family, help me bring somebody else in to be part of that family. Save somebody else from the wages of sin, from that death. It's an exciting thing to realize what God has done for you. When we just stop and think, I can be part of that family. In verse 15, it says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. You don't have to be in fear. You don't have to be in bondage. See, the people of the world don't realize. They think they're living their freedom. They're doing whatever they want. They look at Christians and say, Well, you've got all these rules. You can't go out dancing, you can't go out drinking, you can't do this, you can't do that. And they can, you know, just load everything on there. Not even knowing what scripture really says about half of this stuff. And they look at that and they say, you've got nothing but rules and I've got my freedom. But what they don't realize, that very sin, those very addictions that they think they're free to do, you know, it starts out as, ooh, this is fun. But then it gets a hold of them, these different addictions. It gets a hold of them. And again, we'll go back to that death grip. And it gets them in that death grip. And what they thought they were free to do, now they have become slaves. 
to those very things that were once considered fun. This is a freedom. This is this is something great. I can do whatever. My parents can't tell me anything. I'm free to do whatever I want. And then they realize those things have become their masters. And not the kind of master that loves and cares for them, but the kind of master that would destroy them. Be careful with the sins that you think are going to be fun. It's okay just for a little while. No, because you get a taste of it and it begins to get a grip on you. Sin is a poison that is a sweet poison until it gets a hold of you and you can't walk away and you can't run. But God says, I'm going to free you from that. I'm going to adopt you into my family. I'm going to clean you up. I'm going to take those, sin, those sinful things away from you. But you got to let go. You got to be willing to say, Lord Jesus, take these sins from me. Take these temptations away from me. And you got to work at it. You trust in him and let him do the work. But work at it by walking away from that sin. When that sin starts to pop up, say, no, I'm not going to take any of that. I'm not even going to look that way because I know it's a temptation. Because I'm adopted. I'm a child of God. I don't belong to that family of sin anymore because I'm even freed from it. That's some exciting stuff. So I want to leave you with a challenge for this week. I want you to examine your life. How are you walking? Are you walking in the flesh? Or are you walking in the spirit? Are you living a life as if you've been adopted into the new family of Jesus Christ? Could I look at your lifestyle? Can I look at your Facebook, your Instagram, your social media? Can I look at the, the your, your playlist and your music? The movies that you watch? Can I look at those things and say, yep, he's definitely been adopted. She's definitely been adopted. She's no longer part of that family of sin. She's no longer under that bondage. Or would I look into those things and see just a picture of nothing but sin? Look at those things yourself. Examine them. Pretend you're going to have somebody. Pretend you're going to have God come in. Because he already knows what's in here. But think about it. God's going to come and look into your playlist. He's going to come and look at what movies you have, you've been watching. He's going to look at your social media. Would you welcome God in? Here I am, God. Check everything. Here's my phone. Go through all my files. Go through all my, my contacts. Whatever. Are you comfortable with that? Yes, Lord, take this. Because even if you want to hide it, you want to go delete first, it's too late because he already knows. But he loves you so much, he says, repent. Turn from it. Come into my family, he says. So my challenge is to you. Examine yourself. Are you living as if you've been adopted by Christ into his family? Are you living like the rest of the world? Today is a day to make a decision, to make a change about it, do something about it. Today is a day. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Dear Lord, we come before you humbly this evening. Lord, I pray that you touch somebody with this message. I pray you draw somebody closer to you, that you draw somebody into the family to be adopted, to become a child of God, and to live a new life. I pray if there's one out there listening that, that just has more questions, that they'll reach out. They reach out to the church, call us if they have questions. Lord, just I pray that you, you work in their lives, Lord. Draw them to you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, and we love you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you, and I pray you have a blessed week.